Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer, a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe to join me on a journey to a clean nuclear energy future. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments below what I can do to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurtzgazat video called Who is Responsible for Climate Change and Who Needs to Fix It? As far as who is responsible, does it even matter at this point? It's a global problem that requires a global solution, collaboration, new technology, um, and also the political will to do to build amazing things like more nuclear power plants, like advanced carbon capture technology, like improved batteries uh, for the grid to uh, make the grid more stable in a lot of countries. It is a global problem that needs an effort to, f to fix. So anyway, let's see what Kurtz Gazad has to say about this. Since the Industrial Revolution, humans have released over 1.5 trillion tons of carbon dioxide, or CO2, into the Earth's atmosphere. In the year 2019, we were still pumping out around 37 billion more. That's 50% more than the year 2000, and almost three times as much as 50 years ago. And it's not just CO2. We're also pumping out growing volumes of other greenhouse gases, such as methane and nitrous oxide. Combining all of our greenhouse gases, we're emitting 51... Nox and Sox, uh, nitrous oxide, sulfur oxide, methane, that is actually has much more of an impact per unit of, of gas than just carbon by itself. So a lot of these numbers that you see are in CO2 equivalent, like this 51 billion tons that they're showing right there. Billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalents each year. And emissions keep rising, but they need to get down to zero. In recent years, the consequences have become more serious and visible. Almost every year breaks some horrible record. We've had more heat waves, the most glaciers melting, and the lowest amount of ice ever recorded at the North Pole. Of the last 22 years, 20 have been the hottest on record. The only way to limit this rapid climate change is to decrease our collective emissions quickly. But although all countries agree on this goal in principle, they do not agree who is responsible or who should bear the heaviest load. The developed countries point at their own efforts to reduce emissions and the fact that the large developing countries on the rise, especially China, are currently releasing much more CO2. On the other hand, developing countries argue that emissions by the West are lifestyle emissions, while for developing countries, they are survival emissions. Others call... Hmm. So that's an interesting thought. Um, it would be cool um, if we could like go back in time somehow and start off with like nuclear power uh, and um, solar, wind, um, other less emission intense ones during the Industrial Revolution. The good news is a lot of these newer developing countries, they don't have to make that step where they start with coal or natural gas. Um, it can actually be more economical, but you have to, there needs to be a global concerted effort to um, allow these developing countries to um, develop while at the same time having more green green energy technologies in addition to the develop what's phasing it out it's an it's an interesting problem but like all problems it's got to have a solution countries hypocrites that got rich by polluting without restraint and now expect others not to industrialize and stay poor so who is responsible for climate change and co2 emissions and regardless of the past who needs to do the most today? In this video, we'll talk exclusively about nation states. We'll look at the fossil fuel industry in another video. Mm. Question one of three, which countries emit the most carbon dioxide today? In 2017, humans emitted about 36 billion tons of CO2. More than 50% came from Asia. 
North America and Europe followed with 18% and 17%. While Africa, South America and Oceania together only contributed... Asia's at 53% with some like 70 plus percent of the population there. Percent. China is by far the world's largest emitter with 10 billion tons of CO2 every year or 27% of global emissions. It's followed by the USA with 15% and the European Union with around 10%. Together, this is more than half of the world's CO2 emissions. So it's clear that without the willingness and action of these three industrial blocks, humanity will not be able to become carbon neutral and prevent severe climate change. Next on our list is India at 7%, Russia at 5%, Japan at 3%, and Iran, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, and Canada, all just short of 2%. Together with the first three, the top 10 are responsible for 75% of global emissions. But if we only look at the current situation... With Those are all large countries, um, like China, India, and the US, or those three combined are like 40% of the population, and Countries like Iran, Russia, and Canada do have a very energy-intensive economy around oil and gas. That's where a lot of that comes from. Getting the full picture. Question two of three, which countries have emitted the most in total? If we look at emissions throughout history until today, the outlook changes drastically. The US and the EU both knock China off the top spot. The US is responsible for 25% of the world's historical emissions, emitting 400 billion tons. That's mainly because China didn't really industrialize until the uh, getting into the later part of the 20th century, whereas the Industrial Revolution started in the UK in the 1700s and the 1800s in the US. Mostly in the 20th century. In second place is the EU at 22%. China comes in third at just under 13%, around half of the USA's contribution. India's contribution shrinks to 3% along with the whole of Africa and South America. The UK is responsible for 1% of annual global emissions, but takes 5% of the historical responsibility. Germany, producing 2% of emissions per year today, has contributed almost 6%, as much as the whole of Africa and South America combined. So the narrative... Interesting. I, w I didn't expect Germany having more historical than the UK, just because the UK controlled 25% of the world at, at one point in history, but interesting. That rapid climate change is really the responsibility of the developing world is hard to defend if facts matter to you. <laughs> but this is still not the whole story. I like because that. focusing on countries mixes two things, population numbers and total emissions. If a country has more people in general, its emissions are of course higher. Things look very different if we look at individuals like you, dear viewer. Question three of three, which countries emit the most carbon dioxide per person? The average human is responsible for around five tons of CO2 each year, but averages can be misleading. <laughs> the countries with the largest CO2 emissions per person are some of the world's major oil and gas producers. In 2017, Qatar. Yeah, I figure it's going to be places like Qatar, the UAE, small countries with a ton of with a ton of uh, oil and gas and energy efficient or energy intensive economies rather had the highest emissions at a hefty 49 tons per person, followed by Trinidad and Tobago, Kuwait, mm, yeah. the United Arab Emirates, Brunei, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia. But those are outliers. Yeah. Australians have one of the highest carbon footprints per person, 17 tons a year. They say that those are outliers, not really. It's mainly because they have a lot of energy intensive, but they have really small populations. And in the case of the UAE, really um, a lot of concentrated wealth too among the um, some of the wealthiest people in the world. And again, that's just a small group of an already small population. That's more than triple the global average and slightly more than the average US American and Canadian at 16 tons. 
The Germans do a little better at close to 10 tons, but this is still twice the global average. China may be the world's largest emitter, but it's also the world's most populous country yeah. with over 1.4 billion people, 18.5% of the world population. Per person, it's above average at 7 tons. Historically, hmm. CO2 emissions have been closely tied to a... I didn't actually realize China was above a average. I guess India must be below average because of the large population and small total. Okay. A standard of living. Wealth is one of the strongest indicators of our carbon footprint because as we move from poor to rich, we gain access to electricity, heating, air conditioning, lighting, modern cooking, cars or planes, smartphones, computers, and interact with people across the world online. The enormous rise of China's CO2 emissions is coupled with the greatest reduction of poverty in history. If we order CO2 emissions by income, we see that the richest half of countries are responsible for 86% of global emissions and the bottom half for only 14%. The average German emits more than five times as much as the average Indian. Yeah, I figured India would be small. In just 2.3 days, the average American emits as much as the average Nigerian in a year. And not only that, the harsh reality is that it's the countries that contribute least to the problem that stand to lose the most from rapid climate change. The de yeah, near the equator is not a good spot to be. <laughs> the developing world will be hit the hardest. The consequences could be food insecurity, conflicts over resources, harsher and more frequent natural disasters, and large climate refugee movements. Question four of three. So who should take responsibility? Many of today's richest countries are in a convenient position. They have become rich over centuries of fossil fuel burning and industrial production. They have a large historical footprint and their wealth means they still emit a lot per person. But their country's annual emissions are now dwarfed by other countries because the giant that is China is finally catching up and other giants like India are on their way. Many Germans, for example, wonder how, if Germany only accounts for 2% of yearly emissions, it can have a meaningful impact on reducing emissions. The answer is simple. For one, the richest countries have the resources, highly educated workforces and technology to develop low-cost, low-carbon solutions and spread them around the world. Yes. If we don't want poorer countries to become as fossil fuel dependent as we are, we need low-carbon technology to be cheap and available. And we're getting there. The cost of renewables is falling quickly and a variety of solutions are on the horizon for many different sectors. But it needs to happen. Bothers me that nuclear is not on this chart. Um, and while nuclear is ex does require a lot of upfront costs, um, it can be done scaled down with small modular reactor technology that can be implemented at scale in more of these small uh, countries um, because they don't require as much of the on-site construction. You could ship them even by by rail or by oversized truck, depending on the size, and get reactors on the order of 20 to 200 megawatts rather than having to build a massive massive facility uh, so and yes I'm of the opinion in case you haven't figured that out yet that they are absolutely uh, green energy no uh, no carbon emissions and the waste problem isn't really a problem it's had a solution in, in the past for over 15 years at this point Anyone. much faster if the rich countries of the west decide to seriously tackle rapid climate change the rest of the world would follow because yes. it has no choice just like when the european union enforced energy efficiency standards for technology the rest of the world adopted them too because they wanted to be able to continue trading with the bloc still this doesn't absolve others of their responsibility china is the largest co2 emitter today and it's China's responsibility to grow in a way that will make it possible to transition to a zero-carbon world in time. Others acting irresponsibly yesterday is a horrible excuse for repeating the same mistakes today. Climate change is a global problem, and no country alone can fix it. 
working out who's responsible is not as simple as it seems, and in a way, it's a daft question, but one that has plagued international politics for decades. In the end, it's pretty simple. Everybody Dragon needs to do the best they can. And right now, we are all not doing that. But we can begin today. This video is part of a series about climate change supported by... So, yeah, I like that this one was kind of vague. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I am still remain of the option that the larger countries, yes, while they got the larger emitters that are rich, they got that way, but the, tech, the new technology to have uh, green energy sources didn't exist back then. Again, it would be cool if, if they did, and that's what we started off with. But that was one of the woes, one of the bridges we had to cross during the Industrial Revolution using uh, large coal-fired power plants and a lot of the toxic heavy industry. But we don't have to do that anymore because we have better technologies. It's a matter of spreading the technology, continuing to refine it, so all these new up-and-coming developing countries and any other country that wants to industrialize can do it in a way that is better for the planet. But that's just my thoughts. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think any one country or any small group of countries should be responsible for fixing it? But I don't really see that uh, that way, but that's not how I view the world. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.